She walked in at night at 10 or 11 p.m. and just kept crying and apologizing. I told her just to go to sleep and I need some time to think about everything that had happened. Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, going to go a story titled, My partner, a 26-year-old female of 7 years, left me at the altar and now wants me to take her back. And guys, just like the title said, this is a guy who's been with his girl for 7 years. They're all set to be married, and lo and behold, the big day arrives, and she's gone. And you're going to see, guys, that this girl has a history of this type of behavior. That when things get difficult and scary for her, she bolts. This is not exactly the type of gal for your relationship, guys, you want to be in a relationship with, let alone marry. Can you imagine, for you guys that are older and you've been married, you know shit happens. There are problems with kids, family, all that type of thing. And you need someone that is going to be have their shit together and be able to be a good teammate and partner in this type of thing. For those of you who do marriage and all that. And she bolts. And now she wants him to take her back. And now he's obviously wondering, what the hell, what should I do? And that'd be a very good one, guys, to go over as an example of how I tell you, and I absolutely mean this, that you start dating a girl and you pick up real quick that she's got some issues, mental issues, emotional issues, behavioral issues, whatever you want to call it. It's best to just cash in your chips, cut your losses, and move on. Do not be her hero. Do not be her savior. Do not be the white knight. That's the usual term for this because it's going to bring a lot of uh, hardship on you. As the saying goes, no good deed goes unpunished and that will be your future. But you're also going to see here, guys, that there are some situations, some elements to this that this guy didn't help the situation, which I will point out dealing with his family. So that'd be a very good one here just as an example of the gals with the issues and all that, and just simply just to avoid them. So it starts off, he says here, my head is in a million places right now, so excuse my incoherency. My girlfriend slash fiance slash ex-girlfriend have been dating since she was 19 and I was 21. We've been together through everything together and basically grown up together. I've always known that when she really panics, she tends to run away from things. She used to randomly break up with me and try to dip when we were very young, but we talked it through and got back at that, and she hasn't done that for years now. One of those, huh? She'd break up with him, he'd always take her back. He taught her how to treat him. Uh, Anyway, I proposed a year ago. Smack. It's not the girl you marry, let alone you even relationships with. And it was hardly a surprise. We've been discussing marriage for years. We both knew we'd be on board to do this after she finished her MBA and got a job in my city. Everything was perfect. The past year has been very hectic in planning a wedding, since we're both from another country where grand weddings are the norm and we had to fly people out, etc. About two to three months ago, the nerves started to hit her and she tried to talk me about, talk to me about it. Uh, here we go. The whole behavior is popping up, but at least she's trying to talk to him about it. Uh, I will acknowledge my faults here. She did try to bring it up to me that she was nervous, and the whole ordeal of a grand wedding was stressing her out. Ideally, she would have wanted a small destination wedding with a big party afterwards, but due to both of our families requesting a big wedding and inviting all of their friends, we succumbed. Hang on here. Whose wedding is this? You and your girl's wedding or the parents'? This guy and his girl's wedding. It's not their place to say. And I might add, you're going to find out, guess who's paying for this wedding? This dude and his girl. Not the families. Mom and dad are offended by that? Tough shit, mom and dad. I'm a 28-year-old man making my way in this world. You're welcome to come, and grandma can come, and the aunts and uncles can come, but we're not inviting 400 people that I don't even know just to make you look good. Not happening. And before some people start getting on me about saying about culture and things like that, I don't give a shit. It's your freaking life. Mom and dad gets mad? Okay. They'll get over it. And if they don't, hey, you want to see your grandchildren? Time for an attitude adjustment, mom and dad. I may sound harsh, but I'm also in my mid-40s, and I've learned not to take any shit from anybody, but that's years of experience, which I'm passing down to the younger group. And I know some cultures are very parent-pleasing cultures. Well, look at the cost. 
And you're going to see here the cost of that. I just don't care for people being pressured into do shit and then they suffer because, God forbid, they want to upset upset mom or dad or grandma. It's ridiculous. God live your life for you. And I'm not saying being jerks to people on purpose, but standing your ground and defending yourself. Anyway, she was also nervous about the commitment of marriage, finances, and other things. All this we had discussed before, but I guess she just needed reassurance. However, in hindsight, I realize now that every time she brought it up to me, before it was was she was she was getting anxious. I chalked up to the normal cold feet people get and would would just say it'll be fine and brushed it off. Well, people do get cold feet before they get married, and it's a big step, sure. But she also has a history of issues, so she's got her own shit that she's got to deal with, and I wouldn't deal with. But also, this guy could be a little more helpful. I was also stressed with a lot of the work to do before I took the long leave and planning and budgeting and it all. We both make very good money, but this wedding was going out, of, going out of our budget. And we didn't want to take any money from our parents. All of it got pretty stressful for both of us. So yes, they're paying for everything, yet doing this big, expensive, over-budget wedding just to make mom and dad look mom and dad happy. And so mom and dad can look good in front of their friends and society. Bullshit. Uh, she seemed a little jittery the night before the wedding. I told her to calm down and just sleep. Mostly, I was very excited to make her my wife. Something I've been dreaming about since the day we started dating. Oh, for goodness sake. You've watched too many movies, my man. She's the love of my life, and it was still hard to believe she was choosing to marry me. Smack. Dude, you got value too, you know. You're not a piece of crap that she's just choosing to marry you. And she's one chick. There's 8 billion people on the planet. Plenty of other girls to choose from. She's not some Disney princess. She's the love of my life, and I was still hard to believe she's choosing to marry me. I was the happiest man alive. Well, not for long. On the day of the wedding, she dipped. She left me a note apologizing, saying she couldn't do it all this, and just ran. Oh, thanks, honey. Thanks for all the love I've shown you over the years. Now, she's definitely had issues, but still, grow the hell up. 26 years old, abandoning the dude on the wedding? That's fucked up. I don't even know where she went. All of it unfolded so quickly and it was almost like a movie. All of our family members coming into my room when I was ready to walk out onto the altar, asking me where she was, etc. Pretty traumatic and I ended up crying in front of all my family and friends. Our parents handled the guests and all of it while I just went home, heartbroken. She wasn't at home. I spent the entire day calling and texting her and her phone was switched off. Thanks, honey. Remember, this is the same girl that has a history of breaking up with him repeatedly and him talking her into going back in the relationship with him. You know, people start a certain certain behavior patterns, they continue on in life. This is why I say you don't try to rescue the damaged girl mentally, emotionally, because this bullshit is going to continue. Uh, she walked in at night around 10 or 11 p.m. and just kept crying and apologizing. I told her to go to sleep, and I need some time to think about everything that happened. Well, he, she's lucky to say, get the F out. Now I'm turning to Reddit because I don't know what to do anymore. Dude, what do you think? You want to marry this girl, try a second wedding? It'll be like, uh, what, Charlie Brown, when Lucy holds the football for Charlie Brown, and he runs up to kick the ball, and she pulls it away, and he falls on his ass? That's the kind of the situation with this girl. You'll do the wedding again, and she'll disappear, or freak out, or some goddamn thing. She's apologized multiple times and wants me to wants me back, and says she's even ready to do the whole grand wedding again. And she regrets having run away in a momentary lapse of judgment. She knows she wants to be with me, but she just panicked and got cold feet. A lot of people panic and get cold feet, but they don't do that. Okay, that, that is totally humiliating the guy. And by the way, how much money was thrown away? Believe me, they're not getting their money back for this whole thing. I can't imagine my life without her. Smack. Dude, come on. But at the same time, my trust is broken. I don't understand why she just couldn't be more of an adult and tell me properly before the wedding. Although she insists she tried to. Sounds like she was trying to talk to you, but you were just brushing it off as cold feet. There's no excuse for what she did, and she has a history of this bullshit, but still, she was trying to talk to you. Uh, I felt disrespected and just heartbroken and embarrassed. I had to go through all this and that. I don't know if I can or should forgive her. What if she does this again and runs to some other important event like she did on the most important day of my life? 
Correct. Any advice or suggestions on how to proceed? If I can continue with this relationship or I just cut my losses and move on, thank you for reading this so far. Dude, move on. Okay? She has a history of this bullshit. You always take her back, so you've taught her that she can pull this crap and always come back because you're going to take her back. Early on, the first time she took off and dumped you, that should have been it. And said, I'm done. I can do better. But he, you can tell in his view, his eyes, she's the pinnacle of greatness of women. You know, she's he put her up on the pedestal and kisses her ass and the most amazing woman ever and blah, the love of my life and my sole reason for being. And look how she treats him. And yeah, she embarrassed him. And yes, the parents, there's the pressure with the big wedding and all that. He should have stood up to them. But still, you can't be in a relationship with someone like this. He said right there, I don't have any trust. No relationship can function properly without trust. What happens when they have kids? And something goes wrong with the kids? Is she just going to bolt? Now for some updates here. He says, I'm edit for some clarifications. He says, wow, okay. I did not expect to get these many responses on my post. And I've read through every single one of them. I appreciate all of you taking in the time to read this and give me some advice. There's some things I realized I should clarify or elaborate on based on the comments. Why she ran. I don't think it was the marriage bit. Getting married was not going to change a lot about our relationship anyway. And I know she was just as excited about getting married as I was. You sure about that, dude? I should mention that while both our parents wanted a grand wedding, mine were way more insistent than hers. Her parents would have been happy with whatever we chose and she was happy with, even a court marriage. Mine insisted on a bigger wedding as they believed if we had a small one, now listen to this, it would make relatives and friends think we are poor and she felt pressure to say yes because she wanted them to be like to like her. And she knows how much I love my mom and didn't want me to have to choose. This is again, like I said, you grow some balls and say, mom and dad, I'm 28 years old, I'm working, my wife is, my soon-to-be wife is working. This is our wedding, which we, not you, we are paying for. We are going to have a small wedding. That's what she's comfortable with. End of story. And who gives a rat's ass if friends and family think supposedly we're poor because we're not throwing off this grandiose, ridiculous, over-the-top motherfucking wedding? If that's a problem, too bad. I'm a grown-ass man. And again, if this is a culture where it's a parent-pleasing culture, well, too bad. A lot of cultural things that just continue on generation after generation happen, whether they're good or bad or, or positive or negative, that's a better way to describe it, because people allow it. Mom and dad get mad, they'll get over it, because at the end of the day, mom and dad are going to want to see grandkids one day. Anyway, it says here, the financial bit, she makes much more money than me. Well, that's a problem, but that's a conversation for another day. And she funded at least 70, 80% of the wedding expenses. She offered and was happy to do so. If she hadn't offered that, my parents would have had to step in and fund it, which she wasn't comfortable with. The financial stress of it was getting to both of us, but probably more to her than me. Well, it was more her money. We discussed finances in depth, and I financially supported her while she was doing her MBA, and both of us are comfortable with the fact that she earns a lot more now and will contribute more to our expenses. Yeah, well, I've done stories like that. And believe me, when the girl makes more than the guy, doesn't take long before she starts being resentful of him, thinking she deserves better. Because women want a guy they see as a prize. And I don't just mean a prize in like that he's a kind, giving soul. I'm talking about he's got a high status and makes more money. It is what it is. But that's for another day. Uh, it's all hitting me now that she ended up burning so much more money on a wedding she didn't want, just to make sure my parents didn't dislike her. The history running away, she used to break up and dip from the relationship in the initial two to three years of our relationship, and after working on it, that time, we really managed to get over it. Well, she hasn't gotten it over it, my man. And she has been lying dormant for a while. She hasn't suggested breaking up or wanting to run away for the past three to four years at least. Oh, well, everything's better now. I don't know if I'll be able to trust her because when she gets anxious, she can't think about me. Like she didn't in this situation and didn't consider the humiliation that I had to go through. But I do trust her not to run away when we have kids. But wait, let me just read this again. But I do trust her to not run away when we have kids or at another difficult point in our life. I think. I'm not really sure. It's all hard to process right now. Yeah, well, given her past experience, given the past and what just happened now, I wouldn't be too trusting about her with 
difficult times arise, which they will, particularly when you bring children into the mix. Thank you all so much for your advice. I'll be taking a few days away from her to think about it all and then decide on the next steps. Although, yes, therapy is starting a starting point for both of us, individually at least. Well, here's my advice. End it. Cut your losses. Okay? You're 28 years old. You got your whole fucking life ahead of you. Focus on your career, rebuilding it. This girl is not wife material. And I might add, she makes more money than you. And the time may come, like a lot of girls in America, Western girls, even if what, even if the West isn't your culture initially, that they want a prize. They want a guy that has a higher status, makes more money than them. And they look down on guys that don't make as much. I've done countless stories. I did a story just today in the other channel about something like that if you guys happen to catch it so no cut your losses and move on and I, no amount of begging and pleading is going to make from her is going to make you trust her again and back to the parents thing learn to stand up to your goddamn parents bro grow some balls now a few comments here before i wrap this up one guy says here why would you ever stay with someone who always when things get difficult abandon you there is no trust right there two sentences perfect common sense another one she left you at the altar, and you're on Reddit asking what to do. You say you don't trust her, so to be honest, this relationship is over. She humiliated you in front of all your family and friends, and now she's she says she's ready for a big wedding. After she just wasted all the time and the money spent on the first one. You would be a fool to just forget this and take her back. She has a history of randomly breaking up with you. She left you at the altar. She will run again. She has proven to you time and time again that when things get tough, she will leave you. Again, I keep thinking about Charlie Brown and Lucy with the football. She's Lucy holding that football, and he's Charlie Brown. He goes running, and then, boom, she pulls that football away, and he falls on his ass. Another one says, I'm from an Eastern culture that focuses on pleasing parents. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, that's a toxic and abusive culture. Opie needs to grow up and learn to say no if his parents' requests aren't appealing to him. There you go. So somebody from a culture like that is saying what I've been saying. Why would you force your partner for something she's highly uncomfortable? If you're trying to please your parents at this age and okay to do something highly disturbing for your partner, you aren't adult enough. Amen. And one more the guy says here, the two of you do not have a solid relationship. You've been shown a pretty clear picture of what your future with her will be like, and you never know what will be the next time she will run away. Would you ever want to bring children into this situation? Correct. Oh, he also says... You've dodged a bullet, and the time has come for you to calmly walk away from her and live your best life. There'll be someone else out there who will come into your life that you'll be able to have a stable relationship with. Well, I hope that for him. Now, I've been looking. This is a, a this is a relatively new story, so I'm going to keep an eye on this because I do want to see what happens. But something tells me that there won't be an update, which will mean I'll take her back. And then certainly there probably will not be an update after that when she, like Lucy, pulls the football from him and he falls on his ass. But let's hope for this brother he learns his lesson and he's all right. So, lesson of the story is don't waste your time with the damaged girls. And you teach people how to treat you guys. So if somebody mistreats you and you allow it and they do it again and you allow it, first time shame on them, second time shame on you. And right here's an example. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below what you think about this. Let's see what you think. Should he give her another chance? Or should he just cut his losses and move on? Let's hear what you think in the comment section. Uh, be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.